My mum was a good singer. She used to sing in clubs around Soho, a jazz singer. And I love music. I mean, music, when I was growing up, was one of the most important things I had that I shared with me and my mates. You know, the youth club that we were going to was closing down and there wasn't much else to do. And my keyboard player had a relatively big bedroom and he managed to get hold of a piano somehow. So we got a piano in there and then a drum kit. But then I remember we had to put a blanket over the drum kit because it was driving his mum mad. Then we used to put a blanket over the drummer and all because he was driving us mad. And there was probably about 15 or so of us just hanging around in Mike's bedroom. And they had a singer at the time and I thought, he's not all that. And in fact, he left. And they just said to me, do you fancy having a go? And I really liked it. Even though I didn't have the greatest voice, I knew there was something going on in, in the way I performed. People liked what I was doing. But um, I wasn't taking it seriously enough. And I was a big Chelsea fan, I still am. And the band used to rehearse on Saturday afternoons and they started to notice that I was missing every other Saturday afternoon rehearsal. And uh, in the end, I saw an advert in a music paper that said, semi-professional North London band seek professionally minded singer. And I saw it was Mike, our keyboard player's phone number. <laughs> and that's how I found out I was sacked. So I rang him up and I put on a posh voice. I said, hello, I'm just inquiring about the job of singer. Out of interest, what's happened to the old one? He said, we had to let him go, we had an attitude problem. But that was the best thing that ever happened to me because the band then got a gig in a William Ellis Comprehensive in Highgate. It was for the first time I saw them on stage and I was standing in the audience watching them. And I thought, hang on, this is all wrong. I should be up there, not down here. But I always remember Mike, our keyboard player, and he said, look, if we start taking it seriously, we could get somewhere here. Look, we're young. I'd say we're relatively good looking. We're making a sort of sound that it doesn't seem anyone else is. We've got to work hard. You know, and that's the bit I didn't listen to, and I got thrown out of the band for a while. But it's the bit I remember very clearly when I came back. And then from then on, I, I, I stuck to that principle that we work really hard. And the, and the thing I'll pass on that's kind of along those lines is also that we stuck together. You know, there were seven of us and we had some hard times. You know, we were driving around in a van with no windows, being chased out of, you know, university colleges in Leeds and stuff. And for a period you're thinking, you know, what is the point of all this? I was a big fan of Ian Drury. Ian didn't have the greatest singing voice, but he had an enormous amount of character. That was a real inspiration to me, that you didn't have to be the greatest singer, and also you could sing in your own accent. And also you could sing about ordinary things, you know. I mean, Ian would sing about, you know, going on the bus to Walthamstow or having a cup of tea. We're in the Dublin Castle now, which is a pub where we got our first residency, which meant, you know, we got a gig every Wednesday night. It was an Irish pub, and um, he didn't care what music we played, so long as they sold a few more pints of Guinness. And it was here that I started to get my confidence. We hit it off quite quickly. I mean, I was on top of the pops when I was 18. And from then on, through the sort of late 70s and early 80s, we had a lot of hits. And each time you had a hit, you thought, well, that, if that's it, that's it. You know, we had a great run. I mean, even playing here, you know, I had a job in the week and I used to play here on a Wednesday or a Friday night. And you thought, well, that's enough, you know. You get 50 quid and a few birds come and look at you. And then you have your first hit and you think, well, that's it, at least you can say for the rest of your life, I made a record. Then you have your second hit and your third hit. In the mid-80s, our keyboard player left. We were all getting very tired, even though, you know, we were hugely successful, we were getting tired. We all had young families, I certainly did. I had a couple of young kids, I was very rarely at home. And then one of the band in 1992 said, you know, we haven't played together for eight years. I mean, should we just have a sort of one-off concert? And we did in Finsbury Park. And it brought it all back, you know. We, we played all the songs we haven't played for eight years. You know, 35,000 people turned up. And it really reminded me that, um, of what a joy it had been making music. And that really brought it back to me. And I've had that joy ever since, you know. Because, like I say, in the early days, and when you're young and you're being pushed by a record company so hard, that you never have a day off in about five years. It could take all the reason you started doing it away. But I remember leading the band out onto stage, you know, and 35,000 people, having not played for eight years, we were all really nervous. I felt like, you know, sort of captain of a football team coming out for a cup final or something. And, um, and it couldn't have gone any better, you know. It was a revelation, you know, how much we'd achieved. My kids were like 10 and nine. They'd never seen the band before. All my family were there, all our families were there. And it really was a very proud moment, yeah.